Hello and welcome. If you are struggling with your pending income tax disputes, here is a golden opportunity for you to simplify your tax journey with the Direct Tax Vivaat Se Vishwa Scheme 2024, DTVSV 2024 in short, which is effective from 1st October 2024 onwards. This new government initiative offers you a simplified and efficient way to resolve your pending income tax disputes. So, in this video, we'll break down the key features of this scheme, discuss its eligibility criteria and guide you through the process of opting for it. So, whether you are a business owner, an individual taxpayer or a tax professional, this video will give you valuable insights to help you decide if you are planning to settle your income tax disputes. You can avail the benefit of this scheme in four different situations. One, you as a taxpayer or the income tax department in your case has filed any appeal, writ petition, SLP which is pending as on the cutoff date. And the cutoff date here is 22nd July 2024. Two, if you have filed objections with the dispute resolution panel where DRP has not issued any directions as on the cutoff date. Now, this DRP resolves transfer pricing related disputes. 3. DRP has issued directions but the assessing officer has not passed any order as on the cutoff date. 4. The revision application that you have filed under section 264 is pending as on the cutoff date. Again, the cutoff date here is 22nd July 2024. Now, who can't avail? For any taxpayer, if the tax arrear for a particular year is assessed on the basis of search initiated, raid as it is commonly known as, 2. Where prosecution has already been instituted, 3. Where there is undisclosed foreign income or foreign asset, 4. On the basis of exchange of information as part of double taxation relief, be it DTAA, AEOI, etc. If the taxpayer is detained under corporate posa, or prosecution is initiated or if the taxpayer is convicted under VAPA, NDPS, PCA, PMLA, BNS, etc. Now let's talk about the tax that you have to pay to settle your pending disputes. But before that, we'll have to understand two key factors. One, type of appellant. Two, nature of dispute. First, appellant type. If you have filed appeal after 31st Jan 2020, but on or before 22nd July 2024, then you fall in this category. For ease of understanding, let's say you are the new appellant. On the other hand, if you have filed appeal on or before 31st Jan 2020, then you are old appellant. Now, nature of dispute. This again can be classified into two different categories. One, dispute related to income tax, interest and penalty on such disputed tax. Two, disputes related to interest, penalty and fee where tax component is not involved. Now let's talk about payment of tax arrears. Being a new appellant, if the nature of your dispute is the first category which involves tax component and if you choose to pay by 31st December 2024, then you will have to pay 100% of disputed tax. But if you choose to pay on or after 1st Jan 2025, then you will have to pay 10% extra. So for ease of understanding, let's say 110% tax. But if you are an old appellant, then if you choose to pay by December 2024, you will have to pay 110% tax. After that, it would be 120% of tax. So in comparison to new appellants, old appellants have to pay 10% extra. Now let's talk about the other nature of dispute, that is disputed interest, penalty or fee, which does not involve tax component. Again, new appellants, if you choose to pay by December 2024, you will have to pay 25% of disputed interest, penalty or fee as applicable. After that, it would be 30%. Then for old appellants, if you choose to pay by December 2024, you will have to pay 30%. After that, it would be 35%. Here, you need to remember three key things. One, if you have filed your appeal after the cutoff date, that is 22nd July 2024, then you are not eligible for this DTVSV 2024. Two, if you intend to settle your disputes, you will have to settle it in full. To put it differently, there is no scope for partial settlement. Three, you will have to pay only 50% of this amount in two different situations. One, when the appeal is filed by the income tax department. Two, as an assessee, if you have a favorable verdict from the higher appellate authority. To have a better understanding of computation of tax arrears, let's consider a scenario. Let's say you are into business of trading in, say, home appliances. For FY22-23, 
you have filed your ITR on 15th October 2023 within the due date. Taxable income as per ITR 75 lakh, tax 23 lakh. Intimation under section 143.1 is received on 15 December 2023 and taxable income as per intimation is 80 lakh, so tax is now 25 lakh. Let's say you accept this increase and you pay different amount of tax that is 2 lakh here on 20th December 2023. Later on, that is on 15th Feb 2024, let's say this ITR is selected for scrutiny and scrutiny assessment order is passed on 15th May 2024. Assessed income as per scrutiny, let's say it is 90 lakh. So now income tax is increased to 28 lakh. And this increase in income is because of disallowance of expense of 10 lakh. Because of this disallowance, you'll have to now pay additional tax of 3 lakh. Let's say interest and penalty levied is 1.5 lakh. Let's also assume that you don't accept this disallowance. So you appeal against this order with CIT appeals on 30th May 2024, which is pending. Let's now talk about DT VSV 2024 for the situation. Disputed tax here is 3 lakh. Interest and penalty on disputed tax is 1.5 lakh. You are the new appellant because you have filed your appeal after 31st Jan 2020, but before 22nd July 2024. Now let's talk about payment of tax arrears. If you choose to pay on or before 31st December 2024, then you will have to pay 100% of disputed tax, which is 3 lakh here. Interest and penalty would be waived off. And if you choose to pay on or after 1st Jan 2025, then you will have to pay 110% of disputed tax, which is 3.3 lakh here. Again, interest and penalty would be waived off. Another important thing that you need to remember is, if your tax arrear is because of reduction of loss, unabsorbed depreciation or MAC credit, then you have got two options. Either you can pay tax on the reduction portion or you can carry forward reduced balance. Let's now talk about the process involved in DT VSV 2024. The process is online. First, as a taxpayer, you'll have to file application in Form 1. Remember, you have to file separate Form 1 for each order. Once you file Form 1, the Income Tax Department would issue you tax arrear certificate in Form 2. This would be issued within 15 days of you filing Form 1. Then you'll have to pay tax and file payment intimation as well as proof of withdrawal of your appeal, writ petition, SLP, whichever is pending with the concerned authority in Form 3. This has to be done within 15 days of receiving certificate in Form 2. After that, the Income Tax Department would issue you order in Form 4. This order is basically your immunity against prosecution, penalty, interest, etc. Let's now talk a bit more about filing this application in Form 1. Here, we are not going to discuss about step-by-step -step process. Instead, we'll briefly focus on the process. Once you log into the IT portal, click e-file, income tax forms, file income tax forms, select form 1 DT VSV 2024. If the application is related to TDS dispute, select yes, otherwise select no, select assessment year, continue. Let's get started. This is the format of form 1. It starts with part A where you'll have to provide general information like your name, PAN, etc. In part B, you'll have to provide information related to dispute. Remember, you have to file separate form 1 for each dispute. Then from part C to F, you'll have to provide information related to tax arrears. Then there are four schedules. If the application is related to disputed tax, then you'll have to fill schedule A. If it is related to TDS or TCS, then fill up schedule B. If the application is related to disputed interest, penalty or fee where the tax component is not involved, then fill up Schedule C. Then we have Schedule D. If your tax arrear is because of reduction of loss, unabsorbed depreciation or MAT credit where you choose not to pay tax, instead go for reducing the balance, then you will have to fill up Schedule D. After that, you will have to verify it, give your undertaking, click Preview, then you can proceed to E-Verify. Enter OTP and submit the application. This was all about DT VSV 2024 in short. Hope it was informative. Thank you for watching.